heat waves in the USA. Average highs are approaching 38 to 40 degrees in places with um, potential to break some daytime and indeed nighttime record. And the art of forecasting summer storms in the UK. There's a wide range, not just from the public perspective, but energy companies interested in making repairs to the network, as well as repairing the network once it may have been struck by lightning. It's Friday the 24th of June, and you're listening to Weathersnap from the Met Office. Hello, I'm Claire Nazir, and welcome to Weathersnap, an insider's guide to the week's weather headlines. This time last year, the northwest region of North America suffered one of its most intense heat waves ever, when, on the 28th of June, the small town of Lytton in British Columbia recorded temperatures up to 49.6 degrees Celsius. This week, a similar heat dome setup developed across the USA. 70% of the US population saw temperatures hit the mid 30s Celsius and almost 20% of the country experienced heat reaching into the 40s, breaking many local records in southern and eastern regions. For the latest on the situation, I spoke to Met Office Global Guidance meteorologist David Hayter. The bulk of the heat has been building for much of the last week across uh, areas of the southern US, so areas of Texas up into Oklahoma and spread across the southern states uh, towards Georgia. And that's all really just been underneath an upper high, which has let that heat build over the last few days and now filter up across the central plains as well. So everyone's getting a, a fair dose of heat in that neck of the woods. What sort of temperatures are we talking about? Average highs are approaching 38 to 40 degrees in places with um, potential to break some daytime and indeed nighttime records for, for maximum temperatures across areas of the south coast. Temperatures around there, perhaps uh, overnight mins of 27 or 28 degrees. So uh, no, no real release from the heat outside. Is this unusual for this time of year and has it been associated with lack of rainfall or anything like that? This, has this been a more of a longer term issue? Largely to be expected in the very southernmost states as we enter what is a tropical region 30 degrees north uh, along the southern coast and uh, at the height of summer currently with the sun almost being overhead down in the very far south. That's allowing uh, the heat to build up. It has been this upper ridge which has been locked into a, a blocked upper pattern for the last uh, week or so, which has allowed that uh, extra heat to develop and start edging into risking uh, breaking some uh, daytime records over the next few days. And that's finally going to be shifted away as we go on and, and the upper pattern begins to progress through the weekend and some cooler weather, marginally cooler weather starts heading down their way. So where's the change coming from and what's happening right now upstream? Upstream developments, which are going to be pushing on this locked in pattern and allow cooler temperatures, it's all based around a bit of an upper vortex developing heavy rains across the eastern half of, of the Rockies. That's bringing areas of heavy rain to areas of uh, Saskatchewan and uh, southern Canada. That's uh, aiding some of that uh, snow melt and going to aid some, some river flooding potentially in that neck of the woods. Met Office Global Guidance Meteorologist David Hayter. This time of year, extended hot spells are typically followed by thunderstorms as the atmosphere above us attempts to balance high heat and humidity. Thunderstorms either migrate from the near continent or develop in situ, and this can create lively if localised events. Predicting this type of short-lived event can be challenging for meteorologists. The Met Office continues to develop its science and technology capability with the aim of improving the accuracy and timeliness of summer storm forecasts. Predicting summer storms in the UK is a particular challenge, not least because we have a large area of water around us, and that means that we have big contrast between land and sea. We also have ranges of hills, mountains. We've got a large population density in the UK, and that means that we end up with very different impacts depending on when and where thunderstorms occur. We have a dedicated role within the Met Office, which allows us to focus on the regional detail with thunderstorm development. And we try to feed that into our warnings and other forecasting services. 
one of the big issues around thunderstorm forecasting is actually, of course, the thing that causes thunder itself, which is lightning. And that occurs on a very local scale. Of course, you can hear thunder for miles away. But predicting the onset of first lightning with a thunderstorm, which could just be a heavy shower to begin with, or it could just be dry at the ground, is very difficult to predict. But is obviously for those that are outside and doing outdoor activities in the spring, summer and autumn, it can be particularly worrying. The kind of people that would be interested in lightning forecasts, there's a wide range, not just from the public perspective, but energy companies interested in making repairs to the network, as well as repairing the network once it may have been struck by lightning, but even airports trying to refuel aircraft in a safe environment. One of the things that we're able to do is look at radar data in particular to be able to detect the developing phase of what could become a thunderstorm. We scan using our radar at various elevations up into the sky, so some at the surface and some much higher up in the cloud, and we can see the developing signs in the cloud that we could see lightning in the next 20 to 30 minutes or so. That kind of information can now be looked at by meteorologists and then warnings can then be issued. For example, using our regional Twitter feeds, we now provide that additional information on a much more local scale about where and when we're likely to see that thunderstorm activity affecting more local areas across the UK. Deputy Chief Meteorologist Matt Learnett. Well, this week, Scotland experienced its warmest day since last summer and the hot weather further south eased as thunderstorms developed and moved north. So how are conditions looking across the whole of the UK for the next few days? Here with the outlook, Alex Deacon. A different feel to the weather this weekend. Still pretty warm and humid on Friday evening, but fresher air is arriving, courtesy of low pressure, a low steadily moving in from the west and sticking around all weekend. And the closer you are to that low pressure, the more likely you are to have showers this weekend, with actually much of eastern Scotland and eastern England staying dry and bright with sunny spells. So it's fine in the east, albeit with a bit of a breeze, but further west, unseasonably gusty conditions for Wales, Northern Ireland and southwest England. It's not a great weekend to be camping here. And there will be plenty of showers coming and going through the day. The good news about that breeze is that showers will zip through, so you're never too far away from a sunny spell. The other bit of good news is if you don't like the humidity, then it's going to be much fresher this weekend with temperatures in the west, just in the high teens, really. Still in the east, the sun's obviously very strong at this time of year, so lifting the temperatures up into the low 20s, feeling pretty pleasant, but not that humid feel of recent days. On Sunday, it's a similar story. The low hasn't really moved very far. If anything, we're going to see more cloud and showers in Scotland, and it'll be windier in Western Scotland as well. Still, across many other Western areas, Sunday is another day of showers, whereas many Eastern parts of England, at least, will stay dry and bright with some spells of sunshine. Temperatures in the East into the low 20s, whereas in the West, again, on Sunday, we're only going to be in the mid to high teens. Thanks, Alex. Just before we go, Martin Bowles is here with last week's highs and lows. Here are the UK weather extremes for the week beginning Monday the 13th of June and ending on Sunday the 19th of June. The main story of the week was the unusually high temperatures across England and Wales. Official heatwave thresholds were met across many areas on Wednesday through to Friday. The highest air temperature of all was 32.7 Celsius, recorded at Heathrow Airport in London on Friday. Although this was the highest temperature of the year so far, it didn't break the UK June record of 35.6 in Southampton in 1976. Under clear night skies, some low temperatures were recorded in Wales. 0.9 degrees was the lowest of the week, measured at Sennybridge in Powys early on Tuesday morning. On Friday night, some remarkably high overnight temperatures were recorded. The minimum temperature at St James's Park was 19.6 Celsius, not quite reaching the 20 Celsius needed to declare a tropical night. Northwest Scotland did not see especially high temperatures last week. Indeed, some high rainfall totals were measured. The highest daily total was 24.0 mm at Tindrum in Perthshire on Friday. The longest daily sunshine total in the UK 
was 15.1 hours at Hearn Airport in Dorset on Tuesday. Thanks, Martin. That's it for WeatherSnap. I'm Claire Nazir. Editor is Adrian Holloway. WeatherSnap is a podcast by the UK Met Office. For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office weather app.